Setting myself on fire was a trial and error process. There was some pain. I had some hair that didn't grow back for six months. I burned all the follicles. My self-portraits with the fire started out after the Gulf War. I had started out doing a series where I shaved my head and was expressing anger and sort of rage. And I think that phenomena of people setting themselves on fire might have been triggered a little bit by some of the images from the Vietnam War where people were burning. I was a literature major. I think there are a lot of literary references in my work. The series of self-portraits where I was eating dirt came from Marquez, who has a character who eats dirt. The thing that I'm primarily trying to do with the self-portraits is transcend the self, transcend myself. The earlier self-portraits may have had more of the younger person's angst and rage, and now the self-portraits are more formal explorations at this point. One of the things with my photographs that I keep going back and forth on is the idea of the photo as an image versus a photo as an object. So sometimes I actually try to make the photograph into an object, which is what I'm doing here. I'm taking the same photo and two copies of it and I burn through one and it's a photograph where the, uh, my head's on fire um, and then I've set the, the photograph itself on fire and I've burned the edges around here to sort of as a formal statement and then I've made all these patterns um, with a blowtorch onto the photo and the blowtorch makes the photo buckle and it become more, you know, an object. So a friend had sent me these bees as a as sort of a joke but wanted me to work with them. So I had these bees and ended up, uh, you know, gluing them onto the uh, photograph. Part of it's just the, the tactile thing about bees on a person and, you know, our bees on an image of a person. Two of the things I was attempting to do with the multiple exposures was make them into almost journals, which they were made into panels, which then have lots of exposures that run through and are meant to read almost like as a page or as a poem would on a page. And then the work has recently become singular images from those multiple exposures and that's more the idea of distilling and making sense out of the chaos of imagery that goes through our head. Advertising, media images, we get images off the computer all the time, we're looking at computers all day long, how we put them together is always an interesting challenge. The inspiration for my artwork comes from all over the place. I'm a cultural junkie, which is why I'm in New York. New York has changed a lot. Many of the rough edges have been polished out. The street interactions that one has just walking around, I think in New York has changed dramatically. I remember walking by this guy breaking into a car on the Lower East Side, which you wouldn't necessarily see anymore as broad daylight, and he just said, look, I don't bother you when you're working. Leave me alone. I used to photograph primarily in Manhattan, particularly on the Lower East Side. I'm attracted to street chaos. I'm looking for traces of things people leave behind. I'm looking a little bit for grit, which there's less and less of in Manhattan. Brooklyn's great walking around because it just, it's a changing landscape. You can go out to Brighton Beach and I'll walk back here, which is perhaps a six mile walk and it's a, it's a great walk because you go through Russian neighborhoods, you go through Caribbean neighborhoods. There are buildings from the 30s, buildings from the 40s, there are buildings that uh, look like they're, they haven't been changed in 30 or 40 years so there's a slight time warp to that aspect. And it's great to just watch people drive by, stroll by. I think a lot of photography is about capturing what is. And I think what was sometimes is startling when we come across it and it's still there. And so that it becomes something that's visually interesting uh, because it isn't as current as other things. Um, I, I'm not particularly interested in trying to go back into the past and recapture it, but it, I think it's phenomenal to see different layers of time in, uh, in one place.